You would echo Buffett's sentiment that this is disgusting. I, I certainly do. We're at the uh, fiscal end game. Uh, from here, it's going to be chaos, unrelenting, unremitting. Uh, nothing will happen before the election. Obama has staked out the top 2% uh, Bush cuts mm -hmm. as the defining issue of the campaign. Yeah, you saw that a few weeks ago. When we get into the uh, lame duck, uh, there's no possibility of a grand bargain. When you're faced with a trillion dollar sequester on spending, hitting defense hard, uh, upwards of a half trillion of tax cuts all expiring all over the place, not yeah. just the Bush cuts, but the uh, payroll but tax holiday and so forth. And then you're going to be out of debt ceiling. We yeah. raised the debt ceiling to 16.3 trillion. It'll be all used up. So you're going to face those three things in a lame duck session. It'll I think all it'll get be, built up by the end of the year. All, it'll all be used up by the end of the year. And so therefore they can't go backwards, they can't go forwards. I think this is going to be, uh, you know, an event that we have never seen before. David. How it comes out. Out, I think is hard to predict. The people we talk to, though, uh, even the lawmakers on the Hill and, and, and the economists and those who've been in Washington for a while say, though, eventually it will all get solved. It will. So, what's the real cost here? The real cost is uncertainty that's going to get worse. I think when people tell you it's all going to get solved, they are, they're not explaining how. The way it's going to get solved is by one bump in a road after another after another, partial, partial solutions, three-month extensions, 11th-hour uh, crises over extending uh, the debt ceiling or continuing resolutions, uh, partial uh, temporary extensions of the tax cut or of uh, the sequester being deferred. So None of this will punting, be. Punting it'll be down punt, the line. punt, punt, kick the can, kick the can. It's going to go on for the entire and this economy next then, term. Okay, the next so, term. All right, yeah. so then. This economy then stays mired in the doldrums. Uh, I think what you're it's going to be worse because we will be in recession by the time the lame duck session. Do you think this wrangling is going to drive us into recession? I think we're heading into it right now. The numbers are so weak that there's a pretty good chance we're in recession already and it will be retroactively declared. If it isn't, we're drifting into it. When they relook at the budget numbers with a realistic uh, outlook with a recession built in, before, you know, it was 12 years, no recession for 12 years, <laughs> the numbers are going to be far worse mm -hmm. and then the political environment is going to say, well, we can't possibly raise taxes in, an, in a recession. We can't possibly cut spending. So it's David, actually going to get far worse. There's a Gallup poll out. I think right. it was a, it surveyed people between July 9th and, and 12th, so just last week, uh, asking them their approval rating of Congress. So 16% said that they approve, a paltry 16%. 78% uh, say they disapprove of what Congress is doing. They call it a do nothing Congress. So why aren't the lawmakers hearing that even more? Well, I can't understand why the 16% approve. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to approve. I will note that I was a member of Congress in 1979, and we had a 20% approval rating. So it hasn't gotten any better. It's gotten worse over time. The problem is... Well, in the then, 70s, we were in a recession. Uh, well, yeah. but then at least there were solutions worked out, compromises made. Even Social Security was saved in 1982, uh, 83, when uh, President Reagan and uh, uh, Speaker O'Neill agreed reluctantly. Mm -hmm. Today, we are totally paralyzed. There is no consensus. We have an ideological divide on taxes and entitlement like we've never had before. And when we talk about uh, the, the debt ceiling, the 16 trillion, we've used up all our debt capacity. We can't keep adding uh, at a trillion dollars. Well, we a can year. with interest rates this low. We can if we want to get ourselves uh, into a jam that we will never get out of. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, the debt problem doesn't become a problem until the markets suddenly have a wake-up call and realize if the Fed doesn't keep printing, it, it's game over. Right now, it's not a vote of confidence that the United States is a safe haven, mm -hmm. and therefore they're buying the bond this morning at 1.48 or the 10-year. It's a vote that the Fed isn't going to let anything bad happen to the bond market. If it ever becomes clear, I don't clear, get that. Okay, wait. Because it, because the Fed has been medicating and uh, manipulating this bond market and through Operation Twist, through mm -hmm. QE one, two, and three, and so forth. Uh, you know, the central banks of the world own five trillion of the 11 trillion of debt outstanding. If well, it I ever, mean, it, it, it is well, true. Well, if it ever it, became it, clear that they were going to stop buying, or they were going to have to start selling down the position. 
all of the smart money that's in the bond today right. on leverage, on repo, will sell in a heartbeat. And once the selling starts, it will not uh, be stoppable. It, it, it is true that, that people say that Operation Twist and the first QE didn't do much for the economy. That is true. And that, uh, and that what it has done instead is bring, is bring yields down. And that means that funding for uh, the United States is cheaper and cheaper. I mean, that is true. but That's uh, perverse. Because it's a is signal it? to Congress that you can borrow a trillion dollars for ten billion a year. In other words, but on I don't. Margin. But, but Dave, I don't get the other side though. So if interest rates were to go up, are you saying? I mean, that's not going to solve the, the the stalemate in Congress. No, but it's only go, it'll put some fear and terror back in uh, back in their mind. It will break ultimately this huge partisan stalemate we have today. There is no cost to stalemate. They can continue month after month, have a fight over the debt ceiling, borrow another trillion and move on. When the interest rates start moving up, like they did in various countries in Europe, mm -hmm. that's when fear <coughs> sets in. Right, when you have the vigilantes come in. Yes, and, okay. and it will at some point.